Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared. This is a McNeese Custom, and I'm going to be cutting in a sharpening choil on this knife. Now, if you can see, actually, I'm going to be fixing the plunge grind by also cutting in a sharpening choil, because if you look here, the plunge grind winds up hitting right at the edge. So, it winds up becoming an issue, hitting your stone, um, harder to sharpen, um, makes a smile, it looks ugly, lots of things. So I'm going to be cutting in a sharpening choil slash finger choil on this knife. Now I'm probably going to make it look just like that. This is a permanent marker and I markered it out. Now the one thing you have to be careful when doing any plunge grind or sharpening choil is the stop pin in the back. Now, if we look at this one, this one actually does have a stop pin in the back. So you see the stop pin. Now we can watch where it hits. Now, this is very important because where it winds up hitting is out of the way. Luckily, it hits right down here. So we have plenty of room to cut in a choil up here. But if that, that stop pin actually hit here instead of right here, well, then we'd have to be very careful. Now, I'm going to show you another knife that has a perfect plunge grind and sharpening choil. This one, this is the Tucson 301, but the, the, the stop pin actually does hit in a bad spot. It hits right here. Now, it actually hits in an okay spot, but luckily this one will never need a sharpening choil or a new plunge grind because this is, this is how it should be done every time. Plunge grind starts here, it ends right here, and they give you all of this life to sharpen away, which is a lot of life. However, the stop pin does hit on the thickest part of the steel here. If we ever needed to put in a choil on this, you know, or say if this had a bad plunge grind, well, then we'd have to leave this spot alone and make sure we did not cut into this and we cut in front of it and leave this steel alone. Make sure we don't damage it because that steel stops on this pin here to make sure your knife hits the detent and stays locked in. Otherwise, it would push past it and it wouldn't set in the detent. So that's a very important part of a knife. Now we have the Buck Marksman here, which this is the one we're going to work on. So let's get to it. If you look at this plunge grind, it, it clearly goes over the edge. You know, where the edge starts. So you see the plunge grind starts here and it ends over here, which you see it's getting hit by the stone back here. And it's only going to become more of an issue. I have already sharpened it after the choil. I'll probably uh, tune it up one more time because there's one little tiny speck at the tip I could fix up a little bit better before I send it back to Timbo. But let's get this choil dealt with. So you're going to need a Dremel. If you do not have a Dremel, you can get by with something like this. If it's just a small one, it will just take you a lot longer. This is a little diamond file. You can get these for just a few bucks. And uh, there's the round end and then the pick end. But these do take quite a while, but you can do that. You know, you just trace your little area exactly how you want it and, you know, file it in. Um, it's pretty simple, but with a Dremel, it's just far, far, far easier. Let's get into it. Now, with this one, because we're dealing with hardened steel, I'm going to use this uh, carbide cutter. Uh, but you can get a kit like this and you have everything you need in here to actually do one. They have these little diamond stones over here. These work great. And then you can kind of finish the steel off with one of the aluminum oxide stones. These ones are really soft. So you'd want to start with this and then finish it off with one of these softer ones. And it'll, it'll clean the, the metal up to make it uh, blend in. And then we're going to use a vise to hold my the knife, but if you don't have one, you can get by.
Now, anytime you cut in a sharpening tool, there's going to be one very, very important part. And that's going to be, does your stop pin hit back here? In this case, the stop is up here. So I have no worries. You see my edge right there? So there's nothing stopping me from cutting in a choil. So we're going to try to do one like that. Get a permanent marker, make sure you notch it out really good. Only do one side because it's going to be hard to match up. And then I'll take my other bit and kind of soften up the area. But that is what I'm thinking. And then that'll also make it a little bit better for the finger. Now, when we go to the clamp, we want to make sure we're not scratching the blade. So in this case, I folded up a piece of paper towel. And I am going to go like this, maybe twice. Doesn't have to be crazy, crazy tight, just as long as it's not going to move anywhere. And then you see we have a little notch right there. Make sure your everything's nice and stable. Make sure you have safety glasses on. I, of course, have safety glasses on right now. You see how fast this bit starts reacting? The diamond bits won't be quite this fast, but you can use a diamond bit that'll work really good as well. Also, make sure you're not going at an angle like this. Make sure you're getting both sides accordingly as you move forward. And you can always turn it up a bit and really get into it if it starts bouncing like it was for me. You don't want it going, you don't want that. And kind of rock it back and forth sometimes to really level it out, soften it up, and make it nice and flat. Oh, I hit the edge, but luckily we're going over that far. Careful for that. Now, in order for it to not be pokey, you want to kind of angle it a little bit right here. You don't want it to go straight up and down. Otherwise, it will be pokey. You want it where it's somewhat rounded right here and it angles like this. Otherwise, you know, you'll get that point. I think it's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm putting on the green aluminum oxide bit. Now, this steel will tear this green stuff apart, so they won't last very long. But they're very soft, and they help, you know, uh, soften everything up.
Just to make it match, I might take off the finish on this whole area right here. It'll make it match a little bit better. So it doesn't look out of place. Take a look at it. Bang. And we obviously got to take it apart and clean it up. Okay. After taking it apart, cleaning it up, uh, I like the way it turned out. Nice, good spot for the finger. I suppose I could have straightened this out a little bit or rounded it a little bit more, but. I'm happy with it. I think it looks far better than it did. Now you got all this life to sharpen off of it. And since it's a hollow grind, it'll stay the same thickness for a long time. So this thing's got years and years of use in it. And because of the Buck Marksman, the strap is adjustable. So you can always adjust this as life goes on to make it stronger, you know, and make it work. Um, you know, depending on how strong you want the detent or how strong you want the lockup. But you can see the finish here doesn't match completely. And it never will without doing a bead blasted finish. But it doesn't look that out of place, really. Um, you really have to sit there and look back and forth to really, you know, see it. So I think it looks appropriate. And now I'm going to sharpen it up again. And just uh, because there's a couple spots on the edge, I'd like to tune up a little bit better, even though, man, this thing, this 154 CM with a medium grit takes a ridiculously sharp edge. So there you guys go. And that is how you put in a new plunge grind slash finger choil or sharpening choil. Now, like I said, you know, there's all different sizes. And with that little diamond file, you can put in a little notch. It's a lot easier to just do a notch with those. But if you're going to go this big, you should use a Dremel. A Dremel is going to work far, far easier, far, far faster. Altogether, it probably took me about 20 minutes, 30 minutes with taking it apart and cleaning it up and everything. So there you guys go. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.